Hello everyone, welcome to another video of .NET Plus. Today, we are going to talk about the three different ways of passing a value by reference. Before watching this video, I suppose you already know about the difference between reference types and value types. And maybe you should have a little bit of knowledge about the stack and heap. And if you already know these, let's do this. So, let's start with declaring a new variable of type integer and assign it value of 10. Let's create a method which returns boolean and accepts a parameter of type integer. We also name this one a. In this method, we are going to change the value of a to something else like 20 and we return a boolean to indicate whether we succeeded to change the value or not. Now in our main method we call this method and pass our variable. After this we want to log the value of our variable to see whether we succeeded or not. Now we expect the value of a become 20 after running this method. So let's run the application to see what happens. As you can see the value is still 10. But this is not what we expected, right? Let's check the code. Here we have a value type. If we pass a value type to a method, by default this is going to be pushed into a stack. And in this method the value will be popped and will be stored in the first parameter. So the value inside this A is just a copy of the value inside this A. And this name has nothing to do with this variable. It could be just X. Who knows? If we want to change the value of A inside another method, we have to pass the address to the location of A inside memory. But right now we are doing something like passing the 10 not the a itself so if we want to pass the a we have to somehow pass the address to the location of a to this method there are three simple ways of doing this in c sharp and we will start with the easiest one the first way of doing this is to precede your parameter with the keyword ref and you have to also add this ref to the call site so by putting a ref before your variable you are passing a reference to the location of memory which holds the value of 10 and here in our method we are receiving that reference to that location and everything we do with that location will be reflected just right here now let's run the application again and see if this happens as you can see the value has became 20 now let's check the other ways now suppose we want to force this method to set a new value to our variable no matter what. In this scenario we have to specify the keyword out and we change this one also to out. Using out keyword if we don't assign a new value to the parameter that is specified with out we will get errors just like this. Now C Sharp is complaining about that we must assign a value to that parameter before leaving this method. So we have to assign a value to this. And when we are using out keyword, any value that is assigned to our variable will be discarded. So we don't need this because it is going to be filled with some new variable no matter what. And we can even declare our variable just right here. And it makes our code much cleaner. Suppose we have an input with a value of 10 inside a string. The bad way of parsing this 10 to an integer is that to use int.parse and pass the input to it. And we get the value here. This will work, but not always. If we have an x here, it cannot convert this value to an integer because it has no idea of what this x means. The right way of doing this is to use try parse method. 
we try parse we just say try parse input and we pass a variable that we want to put the result inside it this method also returns a boolean to indicate whether it succeeded to parse this value or not so so most of the time we put this inside an if and here we know that the value was parsed into an int and we can get the value from this variable and if it could not parse the value we will not end up here and there will be no longer an exception so the main usage of out is the times that we want to return multiple values from a method but we cannot do it either we have to create a new type and fill it with our properties or we have to pass a few parameters to our method and precede each one with out keyword there is also another way which is much cleaner than both of these and i have already covered it in the previous video named c sharp tuple i put the link in the description below so make sure to check it out but before checking out the third way make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell this way you won't miss the next video now let's take a look at the third way let's clean up here and change this to in as soon as I change this to in we are getting an error here it says this parameter is read only and you cannot assign a new value to this so what the in keyword does is that it passes the value with reference but it makes it read only so this method cannot change the value inside x so we have to remove this assignment when we are using in keyword we don't have to use an in in the call side but this is not the case with the other ones the other interesting thing to note is that if we had another method here and this one was ref we could not pass this which is read only to that method and we would get errors because now the compiler is checking our code and it can see we may change the value inside here which is allowed we are allowed to change the value inside this method but we cannot pass a read only variable to it now let's talk about when do we want to use pass by reference in our code usually we don't pass primitive value types by reference because this is just adding an overhead to our code and we should only do this when we absolutely need it what about reference types suppose that this was a string and this was was a 10 and this was was also in a string let's change this to ref and let's take a look again in reference types the value is on the heap and the reference which is an address is inside the stack when we use ref we are not passing a reference to that memory location which holds this value but as you may know we are passing a reference to this memory location which is on the stack and just holds a reference to the value inside the heap so we are passing a reference to this reference and most of the times this does not make sense too so when do we use pass by reference we usually do this when we have a struct a medium or semi-large struct because when we pass a copy of a struct which is a value type we're just adding an overhead of copying over a value which is big and if you have a very big struct you may have a design issue so revise your code and there are also times that we cannot use pass by reference and that's when we have an async task method inside async methods we cannot pass value by reference but inside any other method we can just use this 
So that's all about passing a value by reference. Make sure to like this video and ask me your questions in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, adios amigos.